While a traditional wildfire can be a significant problem, it can quickly turn into a disaster when it meets the wildland urban interface, also known as the WUI. The WUI is defined as the line, area, or zone where structures and other human development meet or intermix with undeveloped wildland or vegetation fuel. The effects of wildfires on these communities can be catastrophic, causing environmental and socioeconomic devastation. There are several factors that put WUI communities at higher risk of loss from wildfire, including the density of people and structures, the topography, which can intensify fires and distribute fuel more quickly, and the lack of infrastructure, road accessibility, and sources of water that aid firefighting efforts. Additionally, these areas are more susceptible to wildfires due to human ignition. Federal agencies define two categories of WUI communities that meet this description. Intermix communities, where structures are scattered throughout a wildland area, and interface communities, where structures directly abut wildland fuels. As the United States population continues to grow, the development in the WUI expands. U.S. Census data estimates that from 1990 to 2010, the size of the WUI, where houses and wildlands meet, grew by 33 percent, from 225,000 square miles to nearly 300,000 square miles. And the number of homes on these lands expanded more than 41 percent, from 30.8 to 43.4 million, making the WUI land area the largest growing land use type in the continental United States. 97% of new WUI areas were the result of new housing and not related to an increase in wildland vegetation. While the states with the greatest number of homes in the WUI are California, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, WUI development is not limited to wildfire-prone areas. Today, close to 99 million people, or one-third of our population, now live in the WUI. More than 46 million homes, with an estimated value of $1.3 trillion in 70,000 communities are now considered at risk from the impacts of wildfire. Wildfires are increasing as climate change drives more frequent extreme weather events, including heat waves and droughts. Contrary to popular belief, Wildfires in the WUI are not limited to the traditional seasons or areas associated with wildfires. WUI fires can occur outside of what we have historically thought of as fire seasons, such as summertime in the western U.S. While some of the most destructive WUI fires occur during dry and windy conditions in summer months, they can occur at any time. For example, Colorado experienced a wildfire in December of 2021. Also, while the greatest structural losses have historically occurred in California, destructive WUI fires occur across the U.S. From 2000 to 2019, nearly 2,000 communities were threatened by wildfires over 100 acres, burning within two miles of town. Within one mile of a community, indirect exposure from embers becomes a significant concern. It is interesting to note that with WUI fires, the size of the fire is not necessarily an indication of the economic, environmental, or social impacts. Here are the top 20 most destructive wildfires in California, based on total number of structures destroyed. When we overlay the corresponding number of acres burned for each fire, notice that there isn't a direct correlation between the two. For example, the Tunnel Fire, which occurred in the Oakland hillsides in 1991, burned 1,600 acres, but the density of homes nearby resulted in 2,900 structural losses, whereas the Cedar Fire in 2003 burned over 270,000 acres and resulted in nearly the same number of structural losses. It is the structural fires which introduce urban material or fuel into the mix that make WUI fires so different from wildland fires. To learn more and stay up to date on our work, visit our website. Chemical Insights. Science for a safer, healthier tomorrow.